Steve Dotter here. How the heck you doing this fine day? And we have an eye-opening video planned for today. And I need to thank my friends at Slack who sponsored today's video. We wanted to better understand what's causing you pain in the workplace. What's causing you frustration? So I polled my community and I asked you, what is causing you real pain day to day in the workplace? And no, I'm not talking about poor lumbar support in your chair. I'm talking about what's affecting your productivity, what's affecting your sense of well-being, what's affecting your ability to get your job done, what is sucking the joy out of day-to-day -day activities at work. And you responded, my, oh my, you responded. And the results, I believe, are really insightful. Now, it is no surprise that email is mentioned front and center because, as we all know, email is pure evil. Necessary? but pure evil. In fact, all communications, it just tends to overwhelm us. And we mention that over and over again. Text messaging, voice messaging, instant messages, direct messages from social platforms. It all combines to just overwhelm us. And we often lose track of where we're having the conversation. We, we use so many communications tools that we forget where the relevant conversation is happening. And we lose a lot of time and a lot of cycles as a result as we try and reconnect with a conversation. And then let's not even talk about the documents that are attached to these conversations. Where did I store that document? I mean, we do a terrible job ourselves of organizing our documents, trying to remember whether we stored it on our notebook or in Google Drive or in Dropbox. But when we exacerbate that problem by somebody sharing files with us and then wondering where we stored those files, oh, we all lose so much time tracking down messages and tracking down resources that we need to get our job done. And not only are we being inundated with messages and communications from all the normal places, but it seems like every project management app, every task app, every note-taking app now has a messaging capability built in. They don't solve any problems. They just make the existing problems worse. What we need is a central hub. We need one place that we can rely on. And fortunately, that hub is, as you've probably guessed, Slack. So today we're going to take a look at my top 10 features in Slack that address and help your top 10 problems in the workplace. Oh, it's going to be a good one today on Dotto Tech. The reason most companies embrace Slack, the biggest benefit you're going to find from a tool like Slack is it will get you out of email hell. And specifically, I'm talking about internal communications conversations that you have with your team. If you are, for internal communications, using email, you are losing an inordinate amount of time each and every day. With an instant messaging tool like Slack, all of the conversations happen in a threaded environment, either directly with one-on-one -on -one individuals or as a part of a team. And you have instant access, just like you do in any other instant messaging app. The conversations happen in real time. It's like the person is sitting in the cubicle next to you. In the amount of time that it takes you to compose and send one email, you can have resolved the issue that four or five emails will solve. Slack gets you out of email hell, specifically relating to your internal communications, but if you choose to, it can also help in external communications as well. The second of my top 10 features inside of Slack is how it makes us feel that we're connected with our team. Increasing the intimacy, increasing the connection that we have with our team to the point where even if people are on a different continent, we feel they're sitting in a cubicle next to us is something that Slack does very well. And one of the features that they use in order to make that happen is something called huddles. Do you see right here? This is called huddles. When you click on this, you create an instant voice connection with the person that you are huddling with. So this is for just having a quick conversation. This is equivalent to leaning around the cubicle and asking a question to the, your, to the person in the next cubicle, getting the answer and getting back to work. Can we ask for a better connection to helping teams stay connected? Respect your time. One of the issues that many people identified is the fact that they are on call 24 seven, that people think that they're available and they can text them, they can message them, they can reach out to them anytime, day or night, because they've proven to be available. And you can send a message at any time, day or night. Take a look at this. This is April right now. April is uh, one of my valued team members, but you see next to her profile picture, it tells me that she's offline tells me that she's not available for me to be bugging her right now. And if I try and send April a message, it tells me that April has notifications turned off. This respects 
our space. This respects our time. This reduces the amount of frustration you have and the amount of overwhelm you feel by being available 24 seven. Now, respecting time is a two-way street. We need to respect our own time as well as our coworkers' time. And this is a feature that I really like that Slack adds. It shows you kind of the subtlety of what's going on. But if I'm replying to April right now, if I send that reply, of course, she won't get it because her notifications are turned off. But if we take a look here over in the send menu, if I click schedule for later, I can choose to send the response or the reply or the question that I'm sending to the person at a later time. I can schedule it. So this A doesn't bother them if they don't have notifications turned on with something that's outside of work hours. Secondly, it also doesn't tell them that I'm available at that particular time. If you're, if you're replying to messages at 11 o'clock at night, but you don't want to regularly reply to messages at 11 o'clock at night and you'd rather people thought that you were doing it at seven in the morning, you can just schedule it for tomorrow morning at seven in the morning. So you end up respecting your time as well, at least the perceived, <laughs> the, you'll set the impression that you are not available in those, in those nighttime hours, but you're only available during work hours. All of the benefits of Slack for instant communication and instant access uh, to inside of our own team can also be replicated to our suppliers and our key customers. Now there's two ways that you can use Slack with your customers. One, or with your suppliers, one is you can give them access to your workspace. You can invite people into your workspace and have outsiders inside of your workspace. Now, this works in some instances. I don't think it's always the best way to do things. In fact, I know it's not always the best way, but it's a way that we used to do things and you can. You can see here, I've got multiple Slack channels. These two are my own workspaces. The other two are suppliers workspaces or partners workspaces. But there's a better way to invite outsiders to work inside of your Slack channel, and that's Slack Connect. When you set up Slack Connect, you can invite anybody outside to connect with your Slack channel, but they only get access to what happens inside of Slack Connect. So you don't give them the keys to the whole building, you just let them into a single room in order to communicate with you where you, when you need to and where you need to at that point. Slack Connect is a bit of a game changer as far as working with distributed teams of contractors, subcontractors, and suppliers. For Slack to be a communications hub to work effectively for both interpersonal communications and company-wide communications, Slack incorporates into the workspace channels. So along with direct messages where you can talk one-on-one -on -one or to a small group of individuals and have intimate conversations just amongst yourselves, Inside of the channels, you can share resources. You can make them themed based on entertainment, based on activities, based on projects. You have the flexibility of siloing information within Slack into a cert for a certain project for a certain purpose and allowing your whole team to have access. It moves the general conversations, the things that everybody should know about outside of the direct messaging. So effectively, if you think about what, when people are CCing in email, how they're trying to get a broadcast to everybody, the channels allow you to get everybody who should know about something, the information that they need to know about and engage in that conversation in the channel where it should be instead of clogging up the instant messaging in the private messaging area and, and adding too many people to any one thread. In my mind, one of the most impressive things about using Slack is you can probably use Slack with the existing tools that you already use when you start to onboard Slack. There are so many integrations with all of our other productivity and communications apps, and they end up working really well within Slack. For example, if you're a Zoom user, uh, in, integrated within Slack is the ability to launch a Zoom call right from within Slack. We do it every day on Dottotech. There's a keyboard shortcut that you'll learn about when you use these integrations enough, and it launches the Zoom call right within the chat interface within Slack. And that's just one example of the types of integrations that you can put in place. We have another integration from our CRM that tells us every time somebody purchases one of our premium products, there's a channel that celebrates and it's like ringing the sales bell on the old sales floor where everybody on the team knows that a sale was made because of the integration between our CRM and Slack. If you take a look through the roster of integrations that Slack has, I promise you, you'll probably find the tools that you're using and it'll open your eyes to different ways to integrate and streamline your operations using Slack as the hub. 
I've spoken a lot about resources, about shared files, finding documents when you need to find them. And for Slack to be your communications hub, it has to be able to take care of managing our different shared resources. When we share a file, when we share a document, for the person receiving that document to easily retrieve it, even at a later date. So what Slack does is they allow us to search for documents either by name or this is my favorite. They allow us to search for documents by the person who sent them to you. This is genius because often you can't remember what the name of a document is, but you know who sent it to you. You know who shared it with you. So you will appreciate the ability to be able to search on shared documents by the person who shared the document with you. Certain conversations or certain messages are more important than others and you want to be able to save in some way so that you can return to them quickly. Slack gives us a couple of ways to do that. One is we can actually pin important messages in channels and we can also save our most important messages under saved messages so that you can return to them when you need. Now you can use this as a permanent resource to be able to permanently find important messages or as a temporary measure where you have messages going in and out of your saved folder. How you use it is how you choose to use it, but Slack gives us the opportunity and the ability to be able to save and pin important messages and conversations in the way that works best for our own personal workflow. Now, as a baby boomer, I got to tell you, emojis are not my favorite invention. Having said that, I have grown to really appreciate the effectiveness of using emojis in messaging in Slack. Hear me out. Acknowledging that you have read something that somebody has sent to you or that you're on it, that you're working on it, the ability to send a quick thumbs up or a smiley face or a, a, a some sort of a happy dancing element in order to let people know you are happy about something without having to type it out. It replaces, in, in a lot of ways, it replaces eye contact in the conversations that we have. It's hard to convey the subtleties of how you're feeling and the emotional impact or the emotional reaction you have to any sort of messaging. But using emojis instantly within the messaging environment inside of Slack has become for me something that I rely on. If somebody gives me a heads up that I should be aware of something, rather than writing back a response, a thumbs up tells them I'm on top of it. Similarly, if somebody asks for approval, is it okay if we use this? A happy face or again, a thumbs up tells them that, yes, I approve it. I don't have to type it out. The emoji takes over for me. Emojis end up being a really effective communication tool inside of Slack, something that I have grown to really appreciate. One thing about a tool like Slack over time is how much you start to rely on it is you need access to it in order to effectively do your job. And so the Slack mobile app will become increasingly important to you as you use Slack more and more. And fortunately, the Slack mobile app is up to the task. It gives you access to all of the main features in Slack, allowing you instant access to communications being able to respond and react to the conversations that you should be engaged in and give you access to the resources and the conversations that you need, regardless if you're at your desk or on the road. Well, there you have it. My top features that are built into Slack that help us overcome the frustrations that we experience every day, that you experience every day in the workplace. And so now I'm going to throw it back to you. Did I miss anything? Is there something that you use Slack for that is an absolute essential that people will appreciate having access to or knowing about using Slack that will reduce the amount of frustration and increase the amount of productivity that people experience in the workplace? I would love to read your comments and have you share those with us. And with that, I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, a like and a share is appreciated as well as a subscribe is always greatly appreciated here at Dottotech. Now, before we go, one final thanks to the folks at Slack for making today's video possible. And I want to let you know that every week here at Dottotech, we host a weekly tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday, where we deal with some aspect of productivity or content creation. I want to invite you to join us. They are absolutely free, and I think they're kind of awesome. I hope to see you there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.